He is known by ISIS as the German, Abu Talha al-Omani, a notorious ISIS fighter and recruiter, a former German rapper who in intense and disturbing videos called for violent jihad and proudly held the severed head of an ISIS victim. Dennis Cuspert is his real name, a German national targeted by the United States as a specially designated global terrorist who survived a U.S. missile strike in 2015 and is believed to be still alive somewhere in ISIS-controlled Syria. What has not been disclosed until now is that an FBI employee with top secret clearance lied to her bosses, secretly traveled to Syria, and married Cuspert for a short time, becoming the ISIS bride of the very terrorist she was assigned to investigate. That now former employee is Daniela Green, her face obscure due to concerns for her safety. Having violated the public trust and endangered our nation's security, according to federal prosecutors, Green served just two years in prison and is now free. She wouldn't answer CNN's questions, saying, if I talk to you, my family will be in danger. The information about her case comes from previously sealed court documents. The records unsealed only after Green finished cooperating with authorities and after prosecutors asked the judge to make them public. Unsealing these documents, they write, will allow appropriate public access to this case. Green, who was already married, traveled to Syria in the summer of 2014 and not only spent time in the company of members of ISIS, but ended up marrying an infamous ISIS terrorist. He is um, calling upon uh, his followers to commit attacks inside Europe. He says, uh, I quote, Europe is a new battleground. He says, go and slaughter them. Um, ambush them, shed their blood, take hostages, kill them. Daniela Green, according to people who knew her, was born in Czechoslovakia, raised in Germany, met and married a U.S. Army soldier. The U.S. Army brought her husband to South Carolina, where Green enrolled in Clemson University's history department, seeking her master's degree. Daniela was a, a very hardworking, conscientious uh, student. Professor Alan Grubb was Green's thesis advisor. And a few years after graduation, the FBI hired Green as a translator, assigning her to the Detroit field office. She was tasked with helping investigate a terrorist labeled Individual A in court documents. CNN has learned Individual A is the German rapper turned ISIS fighter Dennis Kusper. Green was able to track the terrorist using three Skype accounts, but it turns out the FBI knew of only two. Green had sole access to a third Skype account, and in June 2014, Green told her supervisor she was making a trip to Germany to visit family. Instead, she flew through Toronto to Istanbul, traveled south to Gaziantep, Turkey, crossed the Syrian border with the help of the terrorist, and disappeared. There in ISIS-controlled Syria, government prosecutors say Daniela Green met up with the ISIS terrorist and not only married him, but told him she was employed by the FBI and that the FBI had an open investigation into his activities. That's Professor true. Alan Grubb says any tale involving terrorism simply could not involve the Daniela Green he knew. So if I told you that she got wrapped up in a terrorist investigation where she's the target, I would assume that you would find that hard to believe. I, I would be dumbfounded by that. I, it would be hard to believe. I don't think there's anything in her background uh, that would um, suggest to me or any of the people she worked with here pro proclivities in, in that direction. So I, yes, I would be surprised. Shortly after arriving in Syria, Daniela Green had a change of heart and within weeks was sending emails back to the United States. I was weak, she wrote in one. I really made a mess of things this time. The following day she wrote, I am gone and I can't come back. I am in Syria. I am in a very harsh environment and I don't know how long I will last here, but it doesn't matter. It's all a little too late. She went on, I will probably go to prison for a long time if I come back, but that is life. On August 6, 2014, Daniela Green left Syria, left ISIS, and did return to the United States, where she was immediately arrested. Unlike other terrorism-related cases, Daniela Green's arrest and plea deal would receive no publicity at all from the Department of Justice, the case quietly hidden, court records sealed for months. Even after her case became a matter of public record, still silence.
A look on the FBI and the Department of Justice websites show page after page of press releases about similar terrorism arrests over the years, but this one stayed buried until now. This is a very wild tale uh, involving uh, terrorism, the FBI, matters of national security, and it's hard to imagine that there would not be public interest in it. CNN investigative reporter Scott Glover discovered the court documents. I think it's a fair assessment to say it's embarrassing when a, an employee with a top secret national security clearance secretly travels to Syria and marries a terrorist who's the subject of the investigation that she's working on. What is even more stunning about this secretive case is how it ended. Green began cooperating with the FBI immediately upon her arrest. She pleaded guilty to making false statements involving international terrorism, though the government said she skirted a line dangerously close to other more serious charges. The assistant U.S. attorney wrote, the nature and circumstances of this offense warrant serious punishment. Similar cases have ended in sentences of 8, 10, 15 years in federal prison. Green was sentenced to just two. According to prosecutors, it was because of her cooperation. She's already out, on probation, but free. As for Dennis Cuspert, the German rapper turned ISIS soldier who married the FBI contractor. He remains at large and still a specially designated global terrorist. Drew, this is an incredible story. What's the FBI saying about, about, about this, about how, how, how it all happened? Really, Anderson, the FBI isn't saying much of anything about this case. What the Bureau did say, though, only in a statement, is that because of what happened here, the FBI took several steps to identify and reduce what they're calling, Anderson, vulnerabilities. So no explanation either of why it appears this woman was given such, such a light sentence? Well, that explanation came from the Department of Justice, where an official told us that this two-year sentence is actually in line with other cases where you have someone lying to the FBI about terrorism, but then also providing what they're calling significant cooperation once under arrest. I got to tell you, we were given no proof of that, no analysis of that. And like we said in our report, most people facing these type of charges are getting much more severe sentences than this former FBI employee.